All right, good morning, YouTube. This is Box Wave. Let's talk Demetrius Andre. All right, last time I made a video of Demetrius Andre was about a month ago, and this is at the time where he called out Chris Eubank Jr. All right, uh, Chris Eubank at the time was still working on a deal to fight Conor Ben, welterweight that's moving up to fight Eubank at 160. All right, and at that time, Demetrius Andre randomly did a video calling out Chris Eubank Jr. Saying that he wants to fight. He's a better fight. Like at this point, I mean, I get him. You know, he wants a name. He wants a name. He's been around for a long time. He's 34 years old. He wants a name. He's a two division champion and he's yet to fight a really big name. You know, he fought some solid fighters, but he hasn't fought a really big name or, in my opinion, a really, really dangerous opponent. Some of it his fault. Some of it is. Some of it is because he was ducked. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go down to history because I did that in the last video and I've done that in previous videos, right? So we're not going to do that today. We're just going to just speak on the topic at hand. So anyway, Chris Eubank Jr. agrees to fight Conor Ben. So now that's out the window. Now, Andre, who has been the WBO champion at 160 for some years now, um, now he has a mandatory against Janabek Aleem Kanui, all right? And Janabek is very dangerous. He's coming up. He's fighting. You know, he's fighting some solid opponents. He's knocking guys out. He's a southpaw himself. And in my opinion, and most of the people that seen him and the hardcore boxing fans that has been watching this guy know that he's a dangerous opponent. He looks very, very good. He looks very good. He looks very dangerous. And many of people, many people are even saying, going as far as saying that it might be Andre's most dangerous opponent to date. All right? It's very debatable. You know, I think. You know, at 154, Vanus Monterosian was definitely the best, um, in my opinion. Him and Jack Colke was probably the best at 154. And then at 160, you know, you could go with Liam, William, Liam Williams. You could go with Selecki. You know, I mean, listen, all solid guys, all solid guys. But most of them have lost in, to the top tier fighters that they fought. They always look good, though. All those fighters are good. A lot of them look good. You know, Kolesk. Selecki looked good against Danny Jacobs. He looked good against, you know, Gabe Rosado. But, I mean, whatever. Janet Bick looks dangerous. I wanted to see the fight. I wanted to see it personally as a fan of Andre. And I'm a fan of Janet Bick, too. I like him. I wanted to see it because a lot of people are talking. Uh, many people believe that Andre is a boogie, boogeyman, and I, I agree with that. Uh, a lot of people believe that Janet Bick is the new bo boogeyman that's hunting him down and everybody else. You know, it's no different from Keith Thurman once upon a time. He was a boogeyman. He was chasing all of these guys. He wanted Bradley. He wants Pacquiao. He wanted Floyd. And, you know, he started getting decent fights and wasn't getting a big, big name. He got Pacquiao later. But then Errol Spence came around and then he became the boogeyman. You know, and that's how it always works. Right, so with Andre, Janet Bake was his mandatory, and now he's made the decision to drop the WBO strap at 160 to move up to fight for the interim WB strap, WBO strap at 168 against Zach Parker. Now, this fight was supposed to happen earlier this year, but Andre suffered an injury, and between this time, he was still debating whether or not to fight Janet Bake at 160. Chris Eubank, if the option was available, or move up to fight Zach Parker, and he's chosen to move up and fight Zach Parker, all right? Now, Zach Parker, I was able to get some time to look him up. I did earlier this year, um, but I went back, and I want to really look at this guy, you know? And he's undefeated. You know, I think he has around 22 wins, 16 knockouts, so he has a good knockout ratio. He's, he's, he's a big guy. He looks strong. He has power. He's knocked out the last five opponents he's had. He's undefeated. He's young. He's only 28 years old. He's good too. And I'm thinking as I'm watching this guy, I'm like, oh shit, this guy's not easy touch. He's not Brian Rose. He's not, he's not some of these guys that Andre just went and beat up real quick. He's not one of those guys. He's on the line of everybody, the top tier fighters or the top fighters that Andre has fought in his career. I think he's on that line. The only difference is he's bigger. He's at 168 already. He's a career. All right. And I know they like have the same amount, like the same height and, and reach advantage. But 
Zach Parker is a career super middle. All right. And he's even for as high as light heavy. So he's naturally the bigger guy Whereas Andre for as low as 154 and worked his way up. This is not an easy fight, neither. This is not an easy fight. And if the winner of this fight is in position to fight Canelo, because Canelo is currently holding the WBO strat at 168. Now, is, now is Canelo going to fight Andrade if he is to win? I don't think so. I don't think so. But we'll get more to that later in the video. So what does this mean? Is this a duck? It's a dunk in the sense that Andre was willing to stay at 160 to fight Chris Eubank, but not Janibik. So it is a duck as far as you're my mandatory. I don't want to fight you. It's obvious that Janibik is a dangerous fighter. Everybody knows that. Whether Andre admits it or not, Janibik is a dangerous fighter. Now, do I want it? Yes, because it's a competitive fight. Does it really do anything for Andre? No, it doesn't. Because while Andre was at 160, he couldn't get the Canelo fight. Couldn't get the Triple G fight. Couldn't even get the Jamal Charlo fight. And these guys got bad blood. Shit. Him and Canelo got bad blood at this point. All right? Um, he couldn't get those fights. Couldn't secure those fights. All right? And there's nothing left. He called out the only only other guy at 160 with a name, and that's Chris Eubank Jr. And Chris is going to fight a welterweight. So Janipik is on the come up. I mean, we're paying attention to him, but he don't have a name. He doesn't have a name. Andre at 34 wants a name. He's at the final. He's in the fourth quarter of his career. The man wants a, a fight that's going to make him money. And that's going to be a so-called, like, somewhat of a legacy fight. Janipik is not that guy. Janipik is a guy that's on the come up. All right? And I know people are going to say it's a duck. But he's going up to fight a guy that's just as proven as Janipik. But the reward is at least he gets a position to fight for a Canelo shot. At least there's a position there. There's nothing left for him at 160. If he had stayed down there for Janipik and won, what would that give him? That wouldn't earn him any other fight. It's not a unification match. It doesn't earn him a fight with Triple G, Canelo, Jamal Charlo. They already turned him down. It, no it does nothing for him. It's just a fight that is good for the fight fans. But to be real, to be honest, Janibik hasn't even accomplished anything more than Zach Parker. At least there's opportunities at 168. Maybe he can revisit a fight with Billy Joe Saunders if Saunders ever returns. Maybe he can try to unify with one of the other guys up there. Maybe he can strike a deal with the PBC. Maybe get a Caleb Plant fight or Anthony Durrell fight, whoever wins that fight. Um, there are opportunities there. You know, if Jamal ever was to go to move up, maybe they could revisit that. Then you have Canelo, you know. Um, there's more opportunities there. So this is not a video to bash Andre. Yes, he avoided Janibik. He did. All right. But let's look at the bigger picture. He's looking for bigger opportunities. And I think he's deserving of it because at his age... What else do you want to do? You lose to Janipik, you're done. Your career is done. Is he going to put his career on the line for Janipik, a guy that's not proven himself? No. He's going to go up and try to fight Canelo. You know, because when he was a champion at 154, and so was Canelo, they didn't unify. You know? Canelo didn't fight for the WBO title until Andre lost the title. Right? When he was stripped. Right? Same thing at 160. 160, he couldn't get in the ring with Canelo or Triple G. They just, just refused to fight him. You know? Um, both of those fighters unified with other people. They didn't unify with 
Demetrius Andre. And I know you guys are going to always say, well, Andre didn't fight anyone. Well, Canelo or Triple G and Jamal Charlo didn't always fight the top tier fighters. They didn't always fight the best. They fight who they wanted to fight at the end of the day. You know, they fought the best. But in between fighting the best, they fought some regular people too. Especially Triple G. Especially Triple G and Jamal Charlo. Not so much Canelo. All right? So this is not a bash in Andre. You know, I've I've been hard on Andre, but this is not a bash in Andre video because I don't think it's a bad plan at all. All right? Uh, the Chris Eubank mess, eh, it's a little, it was a little bit more messy. You know, because I thought the move was about going up and wait, but you were willing to stay down to fight Eubank. So it was a little bit more messy, you know, and the timing of it was poor because uh, the call out was while he was already in negotiations to fight Conor Ben. All right. So look, Zach Parker, good opponent. And, um, you know, and like I said, I don't think that Canelo would fight Andre at this point. I think if Canelo is to be Triple G in this trilogy, I don't think Canelo, I think Canelo revisits 175 at some point if it's to fight Bevo or whatever. I'm not sure, but I don't believe that Canelo's going to just be sticking around at 168, just continuously making uh, um, undisputed title defenses for a long period of time. You know, Canelo's going to be chasing opportunities, and I do believe that he wants another title and another division, you know. He wants another run at 175. Since that 175 looks really, really tough right now. So I don't know. I don't think he should be should be up there. But we'll see what he does at 168. All right. Anyway, that's my views on it. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up if you like the content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.